Okay, thank you. Uh, I'll just read a short statement that's consistent with our media release. Uh, this, of course, is in relation to the CMC report released today about the evade police issue in terms of police pursuits. Uh, we acknowledge the release of the CMC report. Uh, obviously, we'll consider all of the recommendations. Uh, for us, uh, they re relate primarily, of course, to uh, training and policy issues. Uh, there are a number of recommendations that relate to legislative change. We'll, um, we'll provide to the police minister our views on that in due course after we've had a chance to carefully look at it. Uh, and certainly um, this is a, a further progression of this issue which the police service has been dealing with now for over 10 years. Uh, it is indeed um, one of, if not the most difficult issue that um, police face. Uh, a very, very challenging one, and uh, I think that we have made significant uh, advances in the last decade, uh, and I think that's um, acknowledged in the CMC report itself, and I certainly think it's acknowledged in the statistical data uh, since the year 2000, uh, where pursuits have reduced from, uh, in the year 2000, uh, the calendar year, from 558, they went up to 661 in 2001, 681 in 2002, and since then they've fallen to 309 last year, so uh, over 50% reduction in approximately 10 years. Uh, that's a good trend. Um, th these things also relate to balance. Uh, what, we, uh, what we want, and I'm sure that everyone wants, is for the community to be as safe as possible, and we all know that the most dangerous place for any of us is on the roads. So we need to strike that right balance in terms of giving the police the necessary authority uh, to do the work they have to do, um, but at the same time where it involves a police pursuit to sh ensure that um, the risk to the public is minimised as well, and that, that's a very uh, delicate balance. So thank you for being here today. I'm happy to take your questions. Do you agree, uh, Commissioner, that the fines being handed out are way, way too low? Oh, yes, I do. Um, this is my view on that. The, the penalty for evading police where otherwise there would be a police pursuit, needs to be a deterrent. And as well, in my view, the penalty needs to be so severe that it's a deterrent factor to the person driving the vehicle concerned. In other words, if they evade police because they've been drinking and they know that they're over the limit uh, and we're able to... and we abandon the pursuit, we don't pursue them, then if we catch them and put them before a court, in my view, the penalty needs to be greater than what it would have been for drink driving, so it's an effective deterrent. So $300 is, is, is ludicrous, isn't it? I, I don't want to get into descriptive terms like that. Uh, I simply um, express the view that um, the, the current average penalty is not, in my view, adequate in terms of the serious nature of the, def the offence. And, and it's up to us in the police department to pursue every avenue we can uh, to... Um, see whether or not um, more appropriate penalties can be introduced. In your view, exactly how severe should it be? Well, that would depend on the circumstances. Um, clearly, and the CMC report sets that out, every time we abandon a pursuit and make a decision not to pursue, which is quite frequently, we are not always going to catch and apprehend and convict the person driving the vehicle. If, for example, um, it's a vehicle where the police haven't been able to get the registered number and it's late at night uh, and the person they're attempting to intercept drives immediately through a red light and accelerates rapidly and the police make an immediate decision to say that we're not going to pursue that vehicle, it's clearly going to be far too dangerous if this person's going to run red lights, then you may never catch that person. But where we're able to, my view is simply that, that the penalty needs to be such that it is a significant deterrent and needs to be more than it would have been if the person had stopped. Well, I would have thought that that uh, potentially would have been um, uh, something that's open uh, currently to the courts if they so chose. Uh, the, the fine is $20,000, I believe. Uh, but certainly my, my view is a fairly simple and basic one. It's, that is that it needs to be a deterrent, and in my view the deterrent needs to be greater than the penalty uh, if the person had stopped so that it will be a deterrent. I, does that make sense? I hope it does for you. Mr. can we just clear up that matter? Does the simple charge of... Look, I'll take some advice on that. I would have thought there is, but I'll come back to you on that, OK? Yeah. How much is the 
much of an issue? And quite often uh, these matters are tied up with other charges as well. Mm. How much of an issue is it that the evade police powers only really assist you where someone is driving their own car, that is, any stolen vehicle, there really is no assistance? Oh, no, that's possible. It's quite possible that uh, if it's a stolen vehicle that the police will uh, subsequently find out who it was. It's far more difficult, of course. Uh, but it's possible. Uh, it is more likely that if we're able to apprehend the uh, person that the situation is that it was not a stolen vehicle. And generally the, the categories would be that the person's committed a criminal offence, uh, which would usually involve a stolen vehicle and break and enter offences, uh, or that they're unlicensed or disqualified, or that they've been drink driving. Do you see an, an obvious additional power that you could have that would assist in increasing that, that rate of, of apprehension of the uh, Certainly the CMC have made a number of recommendations which, if adopted, uh, would uh, assist us in that regard. And certainly in, in, those, in the case of those recommendations, we would certainly be supporting them. But ultimately, anything that requires legislative change, of course, is a matter for the government. Which ones in particular do you think? Which, which... I'm sorry, I've, I haven't had a chance to read the report fully. I've um, looked quickly through the recommendations before I came down to do this press conference uh, and read the introductory part of the report, but I haven't had a chance to digest it fully. Uh, and it would be um, probably uh, you know, inappropriate to be commenting in detail and specifically on individual recommendations, but we'll do that. But the proper course for that, of course, is for us to put our views forward to the police minister and the police minister would take them to the government. As I've indicated, anything that um, made the job of police in investigating these matters uh, more effective, uh, we would support. And certainly it would seem that that recommendation that you're referring to uh, would be an example of that. So in summary, the evasion um, provisions as they stand right now, you think are inadequate? I think they can be improved. I wouldn't go as far as to say they're inadequate. Um, we are using them. And um, last year, I think we prosecuted you just bear with me for a moment. Last statistical year, we prosecuted uh, 1,287 people for this offence. So in that circumstance, I wouldn't say they're inadequate. But what I am saying is that the penalty needs... This is a very serious matter. Uh, you know, if, if someone flouts um, a direction by a police officer to pull over and being intercepted, and just keeps driving and then drives away at an increased speed. That's a very serious matter in terms of community safety and safety on our roads. And we need, I think, to do all we can to deter that sort of behaviour. The CMC have indicated that a lack of police confidence in the effectiveness of, of these powers is, is restraining the extent to which they're, they're actually used yeah. when they could be. Would you agree with that, 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 that operational police are finding these, these powers difficult to employ? Yeah, look, that's, yeah, that's, that's a big call. Um, when you look at the numbers, um, uh, the prosecutions... Of, the legislation was introduced in 2006. In 2007, there were 1,082 prosecuted, prosecutions. 2008, 1,115. 2009, 1,235. Last year, 1,287. And this year, so far, uh, we're on track for about the same number this year. So it, it, it's also possible, I guess, that, um, that the police are still using the evade police provisions. Uh, it may well be the case, though, that, that they are of the view that despite the fact that they're using them, that the penalties are not adequate. Despite I think there is a slight distinction, though, between those two things. Um, despite the decreases in um, pursuits, do you think there are still too many? Uh, I, I think we are pretty close to getting it as right as we can, but uh, last year there was a coronial inquest and the coroner made a number of recommendations which we have adopted and um, which our people at Ethical Standards Command and others have uh, put together in terms of a revised, more restrictive pursuit policy. Now, we have nearly 11,000 police. You can't um, train people in a new policy overnight. So the implementation date for that revised, more restrictive policy following the coroner's recommendations uh, will be in December this year. I think it's December the 19th. That's the date of commencement. 
and in between we will train people in the more restrictive policy. I believe that the more restrictive policy will be, see a further drop in pursuits. As I mentioned last year, there was 309 compared to 681 in 2002, but I think that figure of 309 in the year 2012, I can't predict this year, uh, I think this year will be slightly less than last year, but it was still only halfway through the year. Uh, but I think 2012 will see a further significant reduction in the number of pursuits. I know disparity in figures there, Commissioner, from 1287. What are these figures you just... OK. OK. The, the two brackets of figures, uh, Spencer, that I gave, the, the 1287 figure mm -hmm. is the number of prosecutions by police for the offence of evade police. OK? And the, the figure of 309 is last year's figures for the number of police pursuits conducted by police. And that figure of 309 last year of the number of pursuits conducted by police um, is considerably less than what it was in 2002, which is 681. I know this is an issue that's been discussed before quite a few times, but would a police helicopter with nighttime capability help as a deterrent? Uh, I've always said that it would be nice to have a fleet of helicopters. I've always said that. Um, but what I've also always said is that we have one of the best resourced um, uh, air wings of any police department in Australia. Uh, currently, we're, we're using three Cessna caravans and we have three uh, other aircraft, a Britain, Norman Island and the Torres Strait, um, a jet uh, and uh, a large aircraft, air, aircraft that uh, holds 18 people and um, travels from Cairns to Brisbane three times a week. Sorry, uh, if I just finish. What I've always said as well is that our priority, in my view, is for a, two more at this stage of those Cessna caravan aircraft, so that we've got one in central Queensland uh, and one in southwest Queensland. Now, once we've achieved that point, I would be asking the government um, for the funds for helicopters. But it's just, I've never said um, that helicopters would not be a nice thing to have. They would be. Um, and they certainly would be helpful in the area of tracking stolen vehicles and people pe and vehicles that may not stop for the police. But it's, a, it's an issue, in my view, of priority, and the priority need is for our people uh, in central and western Queensland. Okay. Is the seriousness of other offences for which an offender is wanted one of the factors that's considered when deciding whether or not to continue with a pursuit? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And, and look, uh, can I just say that I think that we will never be in a space where we'll be able to say that uh, the police um, must never be engaged in a police pursuit because there will be some situations, and I acknowledge that they're not frequent, but um, I know this from personal experience and we've seen it in recent experience. Uh, it might involve um, a child abduction and the media are incredibly supportive and helpful in that space and regard and were recently. And I think that the expectation of the public, and certainly my view would be, if you have a child that had been abducted and the safety of that child was at genuine risk, then the police should conduct a pursuit uh, to ensure the safety of that child. Uh, every, one of, every situation has got to be judged on its own merits, of course. From personal experience, I know of a matter where a person was going to shoot someone and had a loaded firearm beside them on the seat of the car and, and simply had to be stopped. Um, and um, with more serious criminal offences, uh, and I believe there's been examples of that recently as well, potentially, uh, where people may, um, you know, subject to being uh, having the charges substantiated in a court, be accused of committing serious armed robberies involving potentially firearms, uh, and these are repeat offenders, then I think we have an obligation as well, you know, to, um, to pursue people like that because of the risk they pose uh, to uh, our community. But uh, so I think there'll always be circumstances. Um, but what I believe as well um, we have um, developed over time is a recognition that, that uh, in many cases um, some criminal matters are simply not worth pursuing either. And, and the sorts of examples there, and uh, whilst they're serious matters, uh, some stolen vehicles, quite frankly, are not worth a lot of money. Um, and in some cases um, even a breaking and entering offence might involve juvenile offenders with property that is of itself not worth a lot of money and certainly not worth 
um, you know, the loss of someone's life with someone running a red light and killing some innocent person going through the green light. So very difficult decisions, and police officers have to make those snap judgments on the spur of the moment. Uh, but so far, I think, um, in what is a very difficult set of circumstances, set of circumstances, we're heading in the right direction in terms, of, I hope, of keeping the balance right so that we maintain community safety on the other, one hand, but that we don't create unnecessary risk on the other. Is, is it realistic then to add police considering the, the potential of the evade police powers to that decision that they make whether to start a pursuit, which is what the CMC is saying, that mm. will they start a pursuit, they should think, oh, will the evade police powers allow me to do this as an alternative? Or is that... Your, your each task saturation, if you had too much. Look, that's something we want to look closely at. Um, it, it may well be that that is absolutely quite achievable uh, in terms of training. Uh, it may well be that that's quite achievable, but, um, but you're quite right. We, we, we can't as well overload our people to the point where we just make their job impossible. But um, that's um, one that we look closely at, but um, that certainly may well be quite achievable. Just on a sidebar to this, it's the CMC also it's not uh, my, my role or our role in the police department is to enforce the laws in terms of offences. Um, I, I haven't had a chance to um, uh, let alone look at the fullness and completeness of the, uh, the uh, evade police issue. I haven't had a chance to look at all at the uh, prostitution report. Um, if it's the uh, ongoing issue of the regulation of um, out calls or out servicing, then that's been one that's been around for a long time that ultimately will be a decision for the government. I'm sorry, I can't take it any further than that. Uh, look, again, that's a matter for others to judge um, whether or not... I think the question is, um, is imprisonment an effective deterrent? Is that the question? Well, do you think police are doing enough to have enough evidence to imprison somebody who's been caught for a prosecution? Yeah, look, look, thanks for the question. They're actually two separate issues. The, uh, our role is to enforce the legislation um, in terms of prostitution. Uh, I genuinely believe that our people are doing a really good job of that. Um, I think we've come a long, long way in terms of the way we do that. I think we use a lot of common sense uh, in the way we go about that and, um, and the sorts of people we target in that space. Um, but um, the, the issue of whether or not the penalties that are imposed when a person has been convicted for a prostitution offence are a deterrent to that person um, remaining in the prostitution industry, which I think may be the second part of the question, uh, that's not a matter that I can comment on, I'm sorry, uh, simply because I don't have the... No, that's a, that's a matter I'll leave to the judiciary. Uh, it's very rare that I make a comment about penalties. I have today because I think this is such a critical issue in terms of the evade police issue. And I, and I truly believe that it's really important that uh, on conviction that the penalty for that offence uh, be a significant deterrent. But uh, I'm not qualified, nor do I think it's appropriate for me to get into the space of um, the deterrent aspects of penalties for prostitution. Uh, others would be far better qualified than me to uh, comment on that. The, uh, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Just one quick, the mm. police evasion thing is a $20,000 uh, fine. Is that loss of licence as well for license? My understanding is, and I'll come back to you on this, um, that um, there would be an option for a court to impose a, dis a disqualification period, um, a quite significant one. But, but on both of those issues, the extent of a disqualification period and whether a person could be sent to prison, uh, we'll come back to you. OK. Yeah. We'll put out a short release on that uh, soon. Thanks very much. Thank you for your time today.